All right, I'm here with Dr. Bradley Nelson. He is a world-renowned energy healing expert and the lecturer and author of The Emotion Code and the creator of The Body Code System. Dr. Bradley Nelson, welcome back to the show. Wow, thanks, Joel. It's really great to be back. Good to see you. Yeah, you know, okay, last time I talked to you, we were talking about your best-selling book, The Emotion Code, that I'm holding yeah. up right here. Mm -hmm. In two weeks, The Body Code is going to release. Everyone go uh, out and get your copies. That's right. Looks like this. There it is. <laughs> so we went deep into the emotion code, and we might kind of we'll cover some things just to kind of catch people up that didn't see that episode. Definitely go back and watch it. But I want to ask you, uh, what was the impetus for, for writing the, the body code? Like, you, you already have the emotion code out. Like, what did you feel was missing, or maybe what was, what was the reason <clears throat> you even had to create the body code in the first place? Well, really, um, if I go back to when I was in practice, and I, uh, let's see, I think I've been doing this for about 35 years, but I, I practiced for uh, roughly a couple of decades and uh, as a holistic chiropractor, and um, I had been a computer programmer before that, and so I learned a lot about logic and computers and how it all works, and then, uh, and then by and by, I, I came to understand that the subconscious mind within each one of us is really a computer also. And uh, it's a binary computer, which means that um, it can only give you uh, a yes or a no answer, okay? Um, it can give you um, a one or a zero, essentially, and, you know. Uh, and so the thing is, though, you can ask questions and you can get answers as long as you phrase your questions um, in such a way that they can be answered with a yes or a no. And so uh, it was kind of a gradual thing that happened where uh, uh, I came to rely more and more on asking the subconscious mind questions and getting answers. And I was really obsessed with getting to the underlying roots of my patient's problems and I, as time went on, I saw more and more difficult cases, people that had been told there was no hope for them at all, you know, in Western medicine. And, um, and I was able to help those people because I was able to ask their subconscious mind what was really needed. Now, to understand this, you have to, you have to understand that, of course, we spend all of our waking hours in our conscious mind, right? And we work our jobs and we do interviews like this and we have relationships and so on. But when we go to sleep at night, the conscious mind shuts down. What's left? The subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is always there. It's the incredibly intelligent part of us that uh, uh, is creating millions of new cells every minute and is doing all these chemical reactions and keeping us alive from one moment to the next. And I, I've really come to understand, Joel, that, that um, life for each one of us is really a kind of an ongoing miracle. It's like we're surfing this miracle that is life from one moment to the next. Every moment is a miracle. It's really amazing because these bodies of ours should just, they're just made of energy. They should just fly apart by all rights, but they don't. They stay together. It's like we consist of all of these, these numberless um, subatomic particles, really, that are all flying in this close formation, keeping our bodies together, um, allowing us to have this experience in this world. It's really, really wild when you start to think about it. Um, we're, we're having this experience. We're learning about the consequences of right and wrong and good and evil and light and dark, and we get to choose for ourselves. You know, where are we going to go? What are we going to choose, right? Then we get to the end of our lives, and we die, and we go to the other side. Um, this has happened to some people where um, they have a life review, and they're never asked, mm, how much money did you make or what kind of a car did you drive? Never. They're always asked things like, well, how much, how much uh, knowledge did you gain? Or how much love, you know, what's your capacity for love? How much love were you able to develop for your fellow beings? Those are the questions they seem to be asked. So I think that's a clue about what we're doing here. Well, so anyway, as a, as, as a computer, former computer programmer, when I was in my practice working with people day in and day out, I always had a computer there. And I was always using the computer to kind of organize things. As I was finding imbalances on my patients, remember I'm trying to figure out what, you know, why they really have these migraines or why they can't conceive a child or whatever it is. Uh, as I would find imbalances, I would immediately turn to the computer and record these and categorize things. So what I 
Over the years, what I came up with was something that uh, now looks like this. This is a page in the body code. And you can see here there are six different imbalances. And each one of these, uh, each one of these icons represents a category of imbalances. And so, um, you know, we have pathogens and we have misalignments and circuitry and systems and uh, misalignments and toxins and nutritional deficiencies, lifestyle issues, and so on. So these eventually ended up being the six categories. Because no matter what I found on somebody, even if it, was, if it was something that I'd never seen before, I could take that and put that into a category. So to give you an idea, um, and really, I give all the credit to God, higher power, creator, source energy, how, however you might refer to that higher power. Um, I give all the credit up there because... Um, uh, even now, this book and all the work that I'm doing, it really, it really has nothing to do with me. I just work here, is what I tell people. I just, you know, just I, I'm kind of like the janitor guy. I'm just, yeah, you know, <laughs> just pushing a broom. But I completely um, resonate with that. Yeah, totally, right. I totally get it. <laughs> but anyway, to, so to give you an idea, one of these categories is the energies category, and of course, we talked about um, we talked about trapped emotions last time, and. And uh, just in a nutshell, if you miss that one, uh, we experience different emotions all the time. Sometimes certain emotions are a little bit too much for us to process or deal with or, or take on. And so that can leave us with emotional energies that are trapped in the body. And uh, literally, this is our emotional baggage. We call these trapped emotions. And um, what I found during all those years was that those trapped emotional energies were a huge underlying cause of the problems that my patients were suffering from. Um, everything from depression, anxiety, phobias, panic attacks, PTSD, eating disorders, self-sabotage, to things like migraine headaches or infertility or asthma, digestive problems. Uh, I also found that when patients would come in to see me that had been diagnosed with some kind of a disease, guess what was always there? emotional baggage, right? Mm -hmm. Every time there was always emotional baggage as, as you know, that was part of that whole syndrome. And that's why I wrote the emotion code book first was because I knew that if people learned this, they could do this themselves. And I had this, I had two things I was really driven about. I was really obsessed with getting to the underlying causes of my patients' issues. I wanted to really know what was really wrong with them, why they were having symptoms. The other thing after a while when, you know, it's interesting because this was more complicated in the beginning, but as time went on, it gradually became simpler and simpler and simpler. And so it got to a point where I realized, wow, anybody can do this. Anyone can do this. And so I had this, I developed this really powerful urge to get this out to the world so that people could understand that they have the healing ability um, within themselves, to help themselves in most cases, to help their, their kids, their parents, their loved ones, their friends. There's so much that we can do. There's always going to be a need for Western medicine. Western medicine is really great at traumatic injuries and things, right? Um, I mean, they do miraculous things uh, in many cases, but most of the time we don't need surgery. Most of the time we don't need some kind of a drug What's happening is most of the time, the drugs that we take just suppress our symptoms anyway, right? Yeah. And that's a pretty common thing that people do. So, um, so to give you an example of, of kind of how this came about, um, I was thinking uh, when I turned to this section on energies, I was reminded of this story. Um, there was a guy that came in to see me once who uh, was 42 years old. And he told me that he had been a, in a car accident four years before and that his neck still hurt like the day after the accident. Mm. And he'd seen several doctors and nobody had been able to help him. And so I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. And he was about a nine and a half or so on the pain scale out of zero to 10. So he was really hurting. And I thought, gee, that's kind of weird. Four years of this. And so I had this habit. Uh, that I had developed early on of asking for help from up above with everybody that I saw. And so, uh, so I just took a moment and I said, I said, you know, basically something like this, just silently. I said, uh, Father, if there's a better way to, to look at this, help me to understand if there's something else going on here. And 
whoom, I got this answer that flowed into me, just this understanding. And uh, what I understood was that this guy was rear-ended, right? And what happened was when those two cars collided, there was a lot of kinetic energy released. And it was that kinetic energy that crumpled the fenders and maybe bent the frame of his car and so on. Well, that energy passed through the vehicle, right? And passed through his body. But some of that energy, instead of just passing through his body, actually got stuck in his body. And so it was like a little ball of energy, kind of like a trapped emotion is a ball of energy. And that was the understanding that came to me just immediately, instantly. Oh, okay. And so, and that was it. The answer came and went. And I thought, okay. So what I did is I, <laughs> I just took a magnet. And in the emotion code and in the body code, uh, you'll find that uh, we use a meridian in the body to release things and balance things. And uh, the meridian is called the governing meridian. And it starts at the tailbone, and it goes straight up the back, over the top of the head to the inside of the upper lip. So what I did is I just took a magnet, and I just swiped a few times down his back with a, an intention to release that energy from the accident from four years before that had been stuck in his neck all that time, right? So I swiped a few times down his back, and then I said, okay, well, uh, why don't you move your neck around a little bit? And, he's, and he says, oh, my gosh. That's unbelievable. What did you do? Because the pain level dropped from a nine, about a nine and a half to a two instantly, right? And I've seen many cases where pain that's a nine or a 10 drops to zero instantly. Because you see, uh, it's time for us to finally wake up and realize what we're really made of and what we are. We're beings of pure energy. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Sometimes, uh, well, I, a lot of the time, really, most of the time, I'd say, um, to work with our body, to, to help heal our bodies, if we approach the body from the energy viewpoint and uh, we use energy to fix things in the body and we release energies that shouldn't be there, that are there, uh, it can often be the fastest, uh, the fastest uh, way to get to where we want to get to, the shortest distance from point A to point B. So that's one example that you'll find in the energies area. So... Um, and again, remember that uh, we have, we've got this page that looks like this. So in the, in the body code, what we do is we teach people how to, uh, how to get answers, how to muscle test, how to get answers, how to find imbalances. And then, um, you know, from that page, you might be taken here. And then from there, you might be taken somewhere else. The subconscious mind knows the answers and the body code is kind of like a roadmap. It helps you to find that, uh, that imbalance. And that particular kind of imbalance we refer to as physical trauma energy, and that's in this first category of energies. And we, so that story's in there, and we teach people how to actually check themselves or someone else to see if they have something like this stuck in the body. And uh, it's act, that's one of the things that's in the body code that it, it's fairly common. So, so I'll tell you something, when... when um, the first manuscript, we sent the first manuscript into St. Martin's Press um, when it was done, when I'd finished it. And um, it was kind of an overview of the body code, and it explained how the body code works, and we had a lot of stories in there, and it was, it was, uh, th there was not really much more in it than that. It was kind of just, you know, here's, here's what it is, and here's what it does. And uh, they read it at St. Martin's Press, and they said, well, this is great, but we want this to really be more of a how-to book, like... The emotion code. And I thought, okay, well, the problem there is that the body code itself is so huge. I mean, if, for example, if you look at uh, this page, you know, we, these are all custom images that we had commissioned and made, but these are just six of about probably 900 different images. Wow. And um, so... The app itself is about 650 megabytes on your phone. And so if we were to actually take everything that's in the body code and put it into a book, it would be about, it'd be about the size of, I don't know, maybe like the LA phone book or something. It would be about this thick. Yeah. And nobody would want to read it. Nobody wants to read a book that thick. So I thought about it for a while, and then I realized, okay, what we can do is we can, we can still give the overview, and then what we'll do is we'll take... The, the more common things that we find with people and we'll put those in here so that people can have success actually using this. And, uh, and so that's, that's what's in here. We explain everything, how it all works. 
there's a lot that we couldn't put in here because it's there's just too much but but we did put in the you know the uh, the top things and so um, people are going to be able to find imbalances in all of these different areas pathogens and energies and circuitry and systems and misalignments and toxins and nutrition and lifestyle so uh, so I think it's going to be a lot of fun I think people are going to really enjoy it and I think uh, I have no doubt that uh, just like the emotion code, we're going to start getting amazing stories from people. Um, you know, we have, I, I don't even know. I mean, a year ago we had like 10,000, over 10,000 testimonials that had come in from all over the world about the emotion code. Um, and uh, some of those are about the body code, but I, that's just going to happen with this too. There's no question about it. I mean, it's the future. 100%. Matter of fact, can I give you 10,001? Because I have my own personal body oh, code yeah. experience. And sure. I would love to uh, share that with you. Um, before I do, actually, I want to just ask you a quick question, though, because as a chiropractor, I find it so amazing. It's always amazing to see very successful people take other attributes, maybe in another industry they were in, like being a hacker and then bringing it into the world of health and seeing things different. Because if someone was just raised in the world of chiropractic, maybe they wouldn't, they wouldn't think that way, but you were thinking differently already. And I'm wondering though, you know, when that guy came in to get his neck uh, treated by you, he pro looked you up, probably you're a chiropractor. They adjust necks. Why right. didn't you just say, I I'm just, let me just adjust his neck. C2, very common when C2 is out. This is what, I, I mean, I don't know. How did you not, yeah. why did you not think that way? I'm, what made you say, there's something else going on here. I could, sure, I can adjust C2 and it, and it might heal, it yeah. will heal too, but I'm just curious. Well, I'll tell you, it's a great question. And I'll tell you what happened to me. When I was 13 years old, I was diagnosed with kidney disease. And medically, there was nothing they could do. My kidneys were, you know, fighting for their lives. And if my kidneys died, uh, that was it for me because they didn't do kidney transplants. They didn't have the technology back then. So, hmm, what are we going to do? And I was in, uh, I mean, it was, it was really a kind of a terrifying time because I would get these pains in the back that would knock me down. Uh, and they'd come out of nowhere. And so my folks decided they would take me to see an alternative, uh, some alternative doctors who practiced out on the edge of town and uh, in a trailer house in the middle of a wheat field. <laughs> and, but yet... Sometimes when I would go there, I would see a busload of people driving away. People in other states would charter buses to go and visit these people, these healers. And so they started working on me. And right away, I started noticing that I was starting to feel better. And the pains were less and less frequent, less and less severe. After about three weeks, um, I think I'd probably forgotten I'd ever been sick. I was 13 and my parents took me back to the hospital and they ran the test and they said, well, it's a spontaneous remission, blah, blah, blah. I knew that these people had helped me, right? And so, um, so I decided at age 13, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. I want to be a doctor. And um, if I need to practice out in a trailer house in the middle of a muddy wheat field on the edge of town, that's perfectly okay. Because to me, I, that seemed like the, the natural habitat of doctors who knew what they were doing, yeah. you know? who got results. And for so, sure. For sure. Right? And so anyway, I can remember lying on my back on their treatment table and looking up at them and saying, when I grew up, I want to do what you're doing. And they were very discouraging to me. They would say, no, you don't. They'd say, if you go to chiropractic school or osteopathic school or naturopathic school, you go to some kind of school of healing. They said, you'll come out of there like a zombie. They said, they'll fill your head full of so many fixed ideas you won't even be able to think for yourself when you get out. That's what they said to me when I was 13. Now, I believe these people had saved my life. Mm. So when they said this to me, I really took it seriously. So when I went to chiropractic school years later, I was really on guard. And no matter what anybody said um, about how, oh, this, might, this is the best way to fix this or whatever, I would always think, well, maybe it is, maybe it's not. So I was always just kind of radically open. And I, I got a lot of... Um, ribbing from my classmates about that um, because a lot of them, you know, kind of slotted into what they're probably still doing yeah. and that's fine. But uh, I was always just kind of radically open and I just wanted to know what is the best way to do things. And, and I also had that, um, uh, that habit that I'd created uh, of praying and asking for help. And, um, you know, I believe that, uh, you know, when you knock, uh, the doors opened and you ask and you receive, I believe that I know that that's true. And so 
Um, I think most of the time when we ask for help, um, I think we get it, but it doesn't all, it's not always noticeable because it comes in such subtle ways. It comes in the form of a little thought or an impression or I, an idea that we might think is our own. But then there were those times, I can count those on one hand during all those years where I'd ask for help for somebody and uh, it was something I didn't know how to deal with or approach and the information would just flood in. That was amazing, but that was you know, really relatively rare. But, um, but that was fun. You want to hear about another one of those experiences? Please. <laughs> well, okay. My wife was really sick uh, with morning sickness. Uh, our youngest daughter is 23 years old. And when my wife was pregnant with her, she was really sick and she was begging me to help her. And I was thinking about all of the things that I had tried for other patients who were suffering from morning sickness, none of which had, had really worked. And, you know, you can, you can use the wristbands with the little bead things for the acupressure points. You can, um, you know, drink uh, or chew on ginger, things like that. None of those things really work. So uh, I thought, well, what am I going to do to help her? And so once again, I asked for help. And I said, Father, if there's a better way to help her, help me to understand it. Because none of these things that we have so far really work. And I got this answer again. It was one of those rare occasions. This information just flooded in. And it was almost whimsical because it, the answer was, well, you'd feel pretty sick too if you had a new life growing inside of you, especially if your brain wasn't connected to it. And that was the answer. And I thought, oh, so it's, it's a connection problem? And so what I did is I started test, muscle testing my wife, asking if her brain was fully connected to this baby and um, I found that I needed to test the amniotic fluid as a separate thing and the placenta and the fetus and the umbilical, those four things, those four components. And when I tested those, a couple of those seemed to be disconnected. And so I just swiped a few times down her back with a magnet to reconnect those. And uh, I found that the communication is kind of a two-way thing. So not only does the brain have to connect to those parts, but those parts have to connect to the brain. And the moment I got the last thing reconnected, all of a sudden, the morning sickness was gone, like completely gone. A couple of days later, it started to come back again. And so I retested her and found a couple of other things had shorted out. I fixed them. And then I had to do it one more time on her. No more trouble, right? No more trouble. Well, now we have practitioners in different places in the world that just specialize in fixing this, right? I mean, you think about what a huge problem it is. And it can be so miserable, and it's funny because I've worked on a lot of women with morning sickness and, um, you know, and a lot of them have been ready to throw up and they always say the same thing. As soon as you reconnect these things and the morning sickness just disappears, they always say, I'm starving. I'm going to go eat something because, you know, they're so sick. So, um, yeah. so that led to some other discoveries because uh, what I found is that, um, see, these bodies of ours, I believe that, that we have these physical bodies kind of on this temporary basis right now, but within our physical bodies, we have the spirit. So we've got the spirit inside of us, right? And then we've got the, the physical. And the spirit is really like the software that's inside of the hardware in the machine. Now, we know that when that spirit and the body separate, you know, you're dead, right? And they have a funeral and so on. But what I found is that people can be mostly dead. They can be separated quite a bit, right? The spirit can be knocked out of the body to some degree. Sometimes the spirit and the body are there, but they're not communicating for certain reasons. And so, um, so that was another really interesting part of this that is also in, um, it's in the body code. That's actually in, uh, in this, this second area that we call circuits and systems. So good. So good. I, I also want to highlight, you know, you talk about prayer and intention and gratitude and this kind of four step framework that you use for every every time you're going to, you know, work with somebody. And yeah. I really love it. And then, you know, and again, I'm all about results and people can say, oh, that's just ridiculous or it, it doesn't make any sense. But then you also had some great studies you shared in the book about, you know, prayer. And, I, and I'm thinking of one in particular, I think it was done in Israel where uh, they had one group, I can't remember, yeah. like they had surgeries or something. And both groups had surgeries, but one group was asked to pray about their recovery. And um, they both got better, but the ones that actually 
uh, pr actually set some intention in prayer got like way better and like like ten times faster. So there's something going on there for yeah. sure. And, yeah, that's uh, it's it's, uh, it's really interesting. Let's see. I don't know. <laughs> While you look for it, I'm gonna tell my story really quick about the, my own body code, if that's all right. Yeah, please do. Yeah, so um, I, I've done a couple myself with a practitioner out here, and uh, my wife has as well. Now, one now I'm gonna give you with my son. So he had, he was having some stomach issues, some gut issues, and. You know, as a holistic health coach, I start thinking, uh, I, I believe in energy and all that stuff, but you know where my brain goes is, is this H. pylori? Is it a parasite? Is mm -hmm. it uh, candida? And I'm thinking very, I don't want to say myopic, but just I'm thinking gut, like what is going on here? But mm -hmm. I'm doing all these protocols. Nothing's really sticking. He's still having this, 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 these issues. So I book a session with uh, an emotion body code uh, practitioner, and he meets with him, and it just so happened I had I booked the appointment and a week out and the day of his appointment my son wakes up and he goes oh like his stomach was getting like it was just kind of nagging but then this day he goes I don't even want to get out of bed dad which is not like him he goes mm. I don't even want to get out of bed I don't feel good I go well you got your you got your session today and I'm like okay so meet with the coach and uh, he goes, no problem, no, it's it's no problem. We're doing it over Zoom. He goes, just just hang out with him. I, I I don't even you know I can see him and it's fine. He's laying down. He could barely see my son. He's like laying down in the bed, and uh, starts going through, starts going through, just like you have like set up, like you have your energies. And so for people to understand like what a session's like, the practitioner will will ask for an answer. And is it going to be energies, pathogens, circuits, systems, misalignments, toxins? And then the subconscious will lead that practitioner to wherever – is it toxins? Then we'll go down that route. And then there's kind of subcategories. And so you're going to love this. So he he says uh, – he goes, okay, uh, in, he had an inherited emotion, stubbornness. He, guess where he got that from? Uh, Dad you? and mom. But I, I guess I was the more stubborn one. And he, So he had some <laughs> stubbornness, which I thought was hilarious because that's true. Um, and uh, there was a couple other things. But here's the amazing thing. Within half an hour, my, the, the appointment was supposed to be an hour long. Within half an hour, my son gets up and goes, Dad, can I can I just get up and leave? Like I feel – I go, but we're not done yet. He goes – I go, how do you feel? He goes, I feel fine. And he just <laughs> got up, left, haven't had a problem since. <laughs> And the, sure. the practitioner said, no, it's fine. He can leave. I can still work on him while he's gone. I'm, I'm dialed in. It was great. <laughs> it was an amazing – so an amazing experience. And, I mean, just to show you the power of energy and, and, um, yeah. and, and how powerful that is. It really is. It's so cool. Well, I did find that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is from the book. Um, in another fascinating study from Israel, patients suffering from blood infections – had been admitted to hospitals during the years between 1990 and 1996. Volunteers in July of 2000 prayed for the recovery of half of these patients chosen by a random number generator. When the data was analyzed, the group that had been prayed for had experienced significantly shorter hospital stays and had recovered faster than the control group. The fascinating thing about this study is that the patients who were being prayed for had been hospitalized for their illnesses between four and 10 years before they were prayed for. It seems that prayer not only works, it may actually be able to transcend time. Of course, quantum physics explains how this is possible since time is another dimension that is actually nonlinear, which is hard for us to wrap our minds around, yet to say the least, right? But isn't that interesting? <laughs> so I threw that one into the book because it was just so mind bending, but uh, kind of fun, huh? Very fun. I, I want to ask you too. You've got there's so many amazing testimonials, um, but you've got one, and I'm just thinking, you know, there's one on acne. A 14 year old girl, she has this cystic acne. She's got low self esteem, and she's been on toxic medications for years and birth control and and all these things. And she went and did a body code session, and it got cleared in a few days. Like three days later, she's 90 percent of the cystic acne is gone. And yeah. that that I don't know if it was you or another practitioner, but the you know, she said 90% of the the cystic acne was gone and that there were many infections, mold energies, path pathogens, as yeah. well as emotional components. Sure, now, I can read that one. It's on page 217. There you go. Uh, we called it Acne Be Gone. Acne uh, Be Gone. It's from a woman named Sue in Florida. She said, I worked with a 14-year-old girl who had a severe case of cystic acne and low self-esteem. 
She'd been on toxic medications for a year and was now being put on birth control to try to heal the cystic acne. After one body code session, her acne cleared in a few days. I spoke with her three days later and she said 90% of the cystic acne was gone. There were many infections such as mold and energies of past pathogens that were released along with emotional components. This is something the dermatologist could not have found using traditional medicine. Well, traditional medicine, if you think about it, um, is great and it's very useful at, at times, but it's very limited also. And um, what's really exciting, Joel, is that we're now stepping into this age where we're really waking up to what our bodies really are, which is these very complex energy fields. We know that because the body is energy, things can change instantaneously. And um, we're, we're trying to, you know, we're moving out of the old Newtonian physics model, which was great for its time, but now we're stepping into this whole new model of quantum physics where anything is possible. And, uh, and like you were saying with the practitioner that worked on your son, that connection was made. Your son could go do whatever. And I don't know how far away that practitioner was, but it doesn't matter because we've got thousands and well, over 10,000 practitioners now. And they're working with other people in other countries and other places. It doesn't matter. There's no barrier of distance. Uh, so it's, it's pretty amazing. Energy, energy is energy. Energy just travels like that. You know, if yep. you, you can be tapping into me and vice versa. Um, yeah. but I wanted to ask you on this acne, though. And so this mm -hmm. is even, I mean, and, I, and, I, and I'm into it. I, I totally understand this idea of energy. Mm -hmm. But even, even I have a difficult time wrapping my head around, like, this cystic acne. Someone who's been on antioxidants, I'm sorry, anti- um, Antibiotics. Antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Like, her gut microbiome is destroyed. I, and as a holistic health coach, I'm thinking, okay, we're going to have to rebuild that. I know people, and you know this too, that have had mold issues. It could take – we have like protocols that it's, – it's, it's, it's a three-month protocol to get rid of mold. And so right. I'm just amazed. Like how do you wrap your head – so I guess as a practitioner, I'm wondering, how do I wrap my head around, sure, everything is energy versus like – or I could give you a pill – that has Saccharomyces boulardii and is eventually going to like help this eat away at the yeast, you know, and get, get rid of it. Or yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, or sure. is it just like, no, everything's energy, energy. And we can, we can well, kill the mold just like that. Like <laughs> then why yeah. even give pills is my point. Why even, why, why even have Saccharomyces boulardii? I don't know. Well, we, we're really just at the very, very beginning of understanding what, uh, how the world really works on an energetic level. And what we're capable of. But uh, this is another one of those downloads that I got. So what, here's what happened. Um, many years ago, this woman comes in to see me. I, she had been a patient of mine. I hadn't seen her for a few years. She comes in and she says, I've been diagnosed with Epstein-Barr virus. And I thought, okay, Epstein-Barr virus. All right, well, it's, you know, one of the viruses that causes chronic fatigue and so on. And so I thought about it and I thought about what I was going to do to help her. And so before I started to work with her, I tried to make a connection and ask if there was anything that the higher power had for me about this, right? Which I think is so important because I really believe, just as an aside here, what we teach our, our practitioners is that the highest duty of the healer is to really act as a go-between for that higher power. If you're trying to heal all, all under your own power, then you're missing out on, uh, on a lot of power that's available to you, the power of the universe, you know? And so, um, so I said this short prayer, I said, Father, if there's a better way to help her, help me to understand it because, you know, I, I could use the help. And it, this was one of those occasions where whoosh, I got this information that flowed in and what came to me and what I suddenly understood was that you can, you can look at a virus as being, uh, like in her case, this Epstein-Barr virus, you can look at it and conceptualize it as being a tiny, tiny little, like a little machine, it's a little thing, a little... Uh, um, a little virus, but there's another way to view it. And the other way to view it and, and to understand it is from this, from the point of view of pure energy, that that virus, even though we might be able to look at it under a microscope and it looks like a thing, like what we're used to in our physical world, it's also just nothing but pure energy, right? So I thought, oh, okay. And the understanding that came to me was to the extent that I could wrap my mind around that idea that this is just energy, I would be able to work with that energy, just like a trapped emotion or anything else, right? So 
fine. I took a magnet and I swiped it down her back a few times and to, with an intention to release that energy from her body. And so I was able to help her. Well, that was part one of this lesson. Part two came several months later. Uh, and by the way, these stories are in the, uh, they're in the body code book, okay? Because um, these are stories that needed to go in there. But, um, but anyway, a couple months later, two, three months later, this woman comes in to see me and she's had this chronic cough for about a month. And she says that when she breathes in deeply at all, she starts to cough uncontrollably. And so, um, so what I did is I did some testing on her, asking questions of her subconscious mind. And, uh, and I was taken in the, uh, in the body code to uh, this little area right here, okay, which is pathogens. And we have all the pathogens in there. And, uh, and I found that there was a virus. Her subconscious mind said, yeah, it's a virus. And then there's a little list of viruses. And, uh, and I tested that, and it came out that it was, a, it was a common cold virus that had kind of settled down into her lungs. And so, uh, so okay, uh, fine. And so I just kind of imagined, just kind of visualized this, this energy as like a cloud of energy in her body. And I swiped a few times with a magnet with an intention to release this from her body. And so I said, okay, turn around and, you know, take a deep breath. Let's see how that feels. She takes a deep breath. No more coughing. She can't believe it. I mean, it's like, a, it's like a miraculous thing, right? And she's so excited. And finally, about 10 minutes later, um, she left after talking with me and my staff. And I walked back down the hallway and I walked into the room where I'd been working with her. And as I walked through the door, I felt something enter my chest. And I thought, oh no, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> I took a deep breath and guess what happened? started coughing, right? Oh, no. <laughs> yep. And so I tested myself, and of course, it was what I had released from her had kind of hung there um, so that I could walk into it and have this experience that I'm telling you now, right? That's how everything works. And so uh, it was the same thing, this common cold. I swiped a few times on myself with, with a magnet and just released it, and it was fine, and I had no more coughing, no more problem. But um, that was part two of that learning experience from up above, trying to teach me what reality really is. What's the real reality? Well, the real reality is that everything is made of energy. We know, for example, that, um, I mean, they've done studies and they've proven that subatomic particles will change their behavior, apparently, depending on what the observer is expecting to see. Isn't that interesting? So the nature of the world, the nature of our of reality is, is really, it's kind of bizarre. If you start to look into quantum physics, um, the great physicist uh, Richard Feynman said, if you don't think quantum physics is weird, he said, you don't understand quantum physics because it's weirder well, than you can even imagine. Richard Feynman has some of the, the best quotes uh, yeah. ever out there. Yeah, huge fan <laughs> of that guy. Yeah, I, I love that. There's a great, uh, and there's another great example in the book. Speaking of toxins as energy, mm -hmm. uh, you talk about a woman who got a spider bite and venom, and yeah. in, you know, and she comes to you in a wheelchair, and then same thing. You just you you downloaded that information. You thought, all right, well, this is just energy. Like, why can't I just why can't I detox that energy? And yeah. uh, I can't remember. She comes in a week or the next day, and she's. No longer in a wheelchair. She's sitting down in a chair. She's like, hi. You're like, who are you? Oh, that's right. Yeah, so, I didn't even okay. recognize her, actually, because she, she came in on a Friday. And I was working. Was, when I first got out of school, I was working for a, a guy named Dr. Stan Flagg in Kalispell, Montana. I'm from Montana originally. And, and uh, I was just taking notes for him and following him around. And this woman comes in. She's in a wheelchair. She's got her whole family with her. And, uh, I mean, she looked like death warmed over. And she'd been sick, I think, for about three weeks. And she, uh, she'd been to the hospital, and they tested her, and they couldn't find anything. So she came in to see Dr. Flagg. And, uh, and I'm just taking notes. And he does some testing. And um, it, I think intuitively, mainly, he came up with this idea of this, this venom that uh, she had a spider bite. And at first, she didn't remember it. And then she said, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, I did have a spider bite. It was a couple of weeks before I got sick. And so then uh, he worked on her and did whatever he did, you know, to release that energy from her. So I had a, I had a great mentor in uh, Stan Flagg and also in my late brother, uh, Dr. Bruce Nelson, a couple of amazing guys that I learned a lot from. 
And um, so, yeah, so her family wheels her out. And then the next Monday, Monday morning, I came into the office and it was eight o'clock and there's this woman sitting in the waiting room. And I thought, well, she looks kind of familiar. Who is that? It must be an old patient. And I'm talking to her and all of a sudden it dawns on me. This is the same woman. Family's not there, not in a wheelchair, looks totally healthy. And so, um, so yeah, things can, things can change and they can change fast. Um, and it's so interesting because it really, it has to do with our own belief to the extent that we can wrap our mind around these new ideas, uh, to that same extent we're able to utilize these new understandings to work on ourselves and so on. And this is just the beginning. I mean, we're just scratching the surface, but this is definitely the future. Uh, this is going to be the future of healing. Uh, 100%. The, to understand that within us we have all the answers and that things can change immediately and instantly. I mean, wow. It's, uh, it's it just It has to change. Cause That's right. The old model is, uh, you know, it's... Not it treats anymore. the symptoms and it doesn't. Yeah, I signed up today. I, like I was telling you before we got on, I signed up to become right. a practitioner. I'm, I'm all in. I, I, I to, I've had great experiences and uh, I, I totally believe in. You're right. Everything is energy. So that's yeah, gonna um, be fun. I, I wanted to ask you. You know, this is interesting. And I didn't tell you this, but the last podcast that we did, I, I took a clip and I, you had said every every disease or imbalance, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, has always had an emotional component. And yeah. uh, the clip did very well on social media. And a woman commented on me very negatively, and she mm -hmm. said, oh, yeah? Well, how do you explain that my seven-month-old niece had cancer or, like, or uh, leukemia, like right when she was born, you know, seven months old? I said, listen, the carnal side of me was like, come on, relax, lady. Take it easy. Then I relaxed, and I was like, she's clearly in pain. Let me just – be empathetic. And I said, honestly, I have no idea. I said, yeah. but, you know, here's some of the things I've learned. Things get passed on generationally, and I'm just sharing information and hopefully it can help. Yeah. She quickly apologized on social media and said, I just booked an appointment. Thank you. So um, it's yeah. really cool to see what happened. But at the same time, I'm, I'm curious, do you ever have people say things like that to you? And how do you, how do you respond? Well, you know, I just work here. <laughs> it's not my <laughs> it's not my fault, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been saying that to people for years and in my practice, when people would come to me and, um, you know, they'd, they'd often have tears in their eyes and they'd be thanking me, you know, for saving their life or whatever. And I would accept their thanks, but then really what I would do is I would, you know, mentally pass those thanks up, uh, you know, to the creator, because that's really yeah. where all of this is coming from. And I'll tell you something, uh, if your ego gets involved as a healer, then it's all over, see? It's all over for you because the moment that you start thinking, oh, I'm so great and look what I've done and look how I've been able to help this person or whatever, the moment you do that is the moment that you cut yourself off from the very source of your power, which should be the, the higher power, God or universe, source energy, whatever you want to call it, see? So you, you have to be really careful about the ego thing. And so... Uh, all, it does, nothing like that ever bothers me. In fact, I, I very, I don't even remember um, having anything like that happen, you know, recently. Or I, I can't, I'm, I'm too busy, you know, getting this work out to the world. Totally. There are people. I mean, there are people who are, uh, you know, who are really, really stuck in the Western model, and and that's fine. Eventually, they'll come around. You know, I mean, when new ideas like this come along you know what they say. I mean, at first they're ridiculed, then they're tolerated, and then they're accepted as obvious, right? Yep. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's how it's going to be for this too. Absolutely. No I know we only have like 10 more minutes, so I want to wrap things up, but I, I wanted to ask you, I think this is fascinating. People should understand this too. Just when you think about things that you would, the body code really enlightens things you would never maybe think about to an ailment, maybe to your illness. And one of the great examples you give is just talking about how organs are connected to uh, other ligaments and tendons. And, and so, for example, you talk about an imbalance in your, um, in your adrenals could be mm -hmm. the reason your left knee pain. The, your right. right knee could be a result of the gallbladder. Your right. low back pain could be the result of your kidneys not functioning. Mm -hmm. Um, could you maybe just explain on that note and how, and, and, and there's obviously tons of testimonials of sure. you balance the, uh, the adrenals. Guess what? Left knee pain goes away. Well, you know, um, a lot of these understandings I didn't come up with myself a lot. I mean, I was, I was learning when I was in practice, I was learning from anybody that I could any, uh, anywhere I could, 
you know, old writings, ancient writings, new people that were doing interesting things, whatever I could find. And so, um, so I, you know, I, it, I talk in the book about how I, I stand on the shoulders of giants, people that, uh, because there were so many people in the past who came up with so many amazing things that had to, had to happen for the body code really to come together. But one of those understandings um, really, I think, goes, probably goes back to ancient times, and that is that uh, the organs and the glands in the body are actually intelligent. And in fact, the whole body is intelligent. And so not that your liver could maybe pass an SAT test, but uh, on the other hand, all these organs and glands are intelligent. The Chinese believed, for example, anciently that, um, uh, that the organs and the glands were like officials in the kingdom of the body and that some were subservient to others and some were, uh, were over others and so on. And, but there were all these relationships. Well, uh, what I found, uh, there was a guy back in, um, he's been dead now for many, many years. I can't remember his name but he kind of put some of this together about these connections between the, the organs and the glands and the muscles in the body. And there's still a lot we don't know about this, but basically, think of it this way. Um, every organ and most of the glands in the body are energetically connected to certain muscles. So um, think of it this way. If, let's say that you go in your, um, your bathroom and you plug in a, a welder and it draws so much power, it might do what? It might or blow the fuse, out, yeah. right? And um, if your stereo in the next room is playing uh, some music and suddenly it turns off, you'll know it was on the same circuit as the bathroom, right? And to fix it, you need to go out and throw the switch, and we've all done that. Well, the way to think about the body and how these things work is uh, organs are connected and many glands are connected to certain muscles. So if you overload an organ, you can essentially short circuit that organ. You can pop that breaker kind of, yep. and then that muscle is going to be affected. See, and this is a huge understanding for me because I was trying to figure out why can't people stay in alignment? Um, here I am a chiropractor and I'm realigning people's spines and you know, I'd realign them and they'd be great. And then a week later, they'd come back and they'd all be out of alignment again. That drove me crazy. It drove me wild. What's going on here? Am I a bad doctor? Is it me? Is it the patient? Why, why won't they stay put? And then this understanding gradually came that, that they, these bones don't stay aligned because the muscles are out of balance. And the muscles are out of balance because there's an organ or a gland that's out of balance because it's the organs or glands that are really primary. And uh, so, like you said, um, if you have low back pain, very good possibility you've got an imbalance in, uh, in one of your kidneys. And um, usually, when, uh, here's another thing that's fascinating that we talk about in the body code. When you have paired organs like the kidneys or the lungs, adrenal glands, and so on, uh, the left side organ or gland will be the main and the right side will be the backup so the left side will usually short out and blow out first, right? And that's why um, you see the, for example, with the adrenal glands, those are the stress glands of the body. They sit right on top of the kidneys. Those glands connect energetically to the calf muscles and some other muscles that cross the knee joint. Now, the left side, if you're under too much stress for too long, that left adrenal will become imbalanced, Therefore, those muscles now, that left calf muscle and those muscles that cross the knee joint on the left side, those are now imbalanced as well, see? Mm -hmm. And so left knee pain is really one of the earliest cause or earliest signs of prolonged stress, right? Think about that. You might have left knee, left knee pain, <laughs> you know? And if it's right knee pain, it's usually the gallbladder because the gallbladder connects with this little muscle in the back of the right knee, and if your gallbladder gets shorted out because maybe maybe there's emotional baggage there, maybe uh, maybe you've been eating you know too many French fries, uh, anything that you can anything that you do to really stress or overstress that gland or organ will tend to do that. So um, yeah, another great one is the liver. If your liver's imbalanced, uh, you'll tend to have pain in between your shoulder blades because the liver connects with a muscle. Uh, called the rhomboid muscle that passes, um, it connects the spine to the inner edge of the scapula on the right side. Mm. And um, 
That's one of my favorites because uh, when I was in uh, when I was in the student clinic in chiropractic school, I had this guy that was a patient, and he would come in, and he was always out of alignment. He, that area always bothered him. So I'd realign that area, and he'd feel great. And a week later, he'd come back, and it would all be out of alignment again, and be bothering him again. And this went on the whole time. I mean, this guy became a really good friend of mine, and I needed all these visits to be able to graduate. But it bothered me. I used to think, well, I don't understand this. How come I can't fix this guy? He keeps coming yeah. back. I mean, I don't want him to keep coming back. I want, I want him to just get fixed. But that understanding took years to come around later. So, yeah, really interesting. So, so amazing because, again, some practitioners, too, like they might think, well, he got adjusted, but he, he's got the imbalance because he needs to do more band pull-aparts or it's an exercise he needs to do. But sure. it could be none of that. It could be emotional. It could be the organs. And so the body code really opens up all of that. And uh, I just, I love it. Um, last couple of questions. We'll wrap it up. Sure. What exciting projects do you have? I, obviously, the book's coming out, but I saw a hint of some new things coming out, like maybe a, there's going to be a belief code uh, practitioner course and then a healing yeah. mastery course. So, yeah, I don't know if you want to talk is. about those. So we have level one certification is the emotion code. Uh, level two certification is, uh, is the body code. So if you really want to learn these things and really understand them and, um, and be able to actually uh, have your own practice and work with people and charge people, then um, that's the way to do it. Not everybody. I, I'd say we probably have about a third of the people that go through our certification programs that really don't have any interest in, in having their own practice. They just want to really own the stuff and really learn it. So body code certification is level two. Level three is going to be belief code certification. And we're hard at work on that right now. And uh, we're hoping to launch that here uh, sometime in the second quarter. Wow. Um, and so what that's about is actually being able to access the subconscious mind to root out the negative belief systems that, uh, that sometimes exist within us. Um, and uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be really exciting, and it's going to work just like everything else works, very very fast, very rapid, very easy. Uh, um, you know, so that's exciting. And then healing mastery that will honestly probably be a 2024 project, and um, that's going to be uh, the highest level where ever. And we we're not exactly sure how that's going to work yet, but it's going to be everything else um, that was not in the other levels. Uh, t and, and you're going to have to be, you know, really highly trained to get to that level, but it's really fun. So there's a, there's a, a pathway of progression for people if they want to, uh, if they want to really understand this. And, uh, and we have a lot of people all over the world who are doing really, really well. Um, in fact, I have to tell you, Please. um, about, uh, my wife and I were in Istanbul, um, earlier last year and we did a little event there and we had a, we had one of our practitioners that showed up. His name is Umer, and um, he's a body code practitioner, and uh, he's super busy. He mainly works with people in the United States. Uh, he told us that he never actually talks to anybody. People just go online, and they order sessions from him, and he does them remotely and then sends them the results by email. And um, he told us he was doing 10 to 15 sessions every day, um, seven days a week. And, wow. and uh, my wife said, well, you probably should take Sundays off, you know, so you're at least taking one day off a week. And, but he said, you guys have totally changed our lives. I mean, just amazing. So um, there are lots of people that are uh, doing really, really well doing this work all over the world, like him. Yeah, it's really, really key. And I can just say for my own self, being a holistic health coach, every person that I've ever worked with, I've always seen some type of an emotional component that is blocking them from reaching the highest version of who they are, whether it's health or mindset or belief. So I can't wait for that future course to come out because it's so, so huge. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. La go out and get the book. I want to just also say the book uh, f from someone who's had body code practice um, sessions done and had my kids um, go through them. I think the book was laid out excellent and it gives a great overview. Like you said, it's a perfect guide for just kind of getting a taste and understanding what's possible. And actually, I mean, actually, you give a lot of like you said, you don't have to do it. You could learn a lot of the practices and be self-sufficient just from the book. So um, it's a, but if you want to go another further level and help other people, then definitely get the certification mm -hmm. like me and many others. Um, last but not any, anything else you want to share or, um, or at least let people know where they can find you connect with what every, all the good things that you're doing and uh, where yeah. to get the book. 
Sure. Well, uh, of course, the book is available through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, wherever books are sold. The book's also available as an audio book on, uh, on Amazon, uh, or sorry, on, uh, on Audible, which I think Amazon owns Audible anyway. Yes, you're but, right. Um, but I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, we, George Nori wrote the foreword for us, and, um, and he actually narrated his own foreword. I narrate the book except for all of the testimonials that are in there. Those were actually done for the first time in, um, in our work. They've been done by, uh, by actors and actresses uh, who, who do the voices for those. So I'm excited to listen to that because I think it's going to be really fun. My wife is in there. She actually uh, um, did the voice for a story that, um, uh, that she tells in the book. So, um, yeah, I, I hope that you get the book and, um, and read it, and it, it's, it's really going to open your mind. Um, no, uh, no doubt about that, and that's what we need in this world right now because, you know, these old power structures that have, uh, that have kind of kept mankind in darkness for a long, long time are really on the ropes now, and we're on the verge of stepping into a whole new world. And so you look around, you see all this chaos going on. Well, that's what it's about. It's kind of like the earth is in labor. And these are like the last, the last few moments of labor and... Um, but pretty soon there's a new world that's going to be birthing here, and uh, it's going to be really exciting. I'm happy to be on the, <laughs> the light side of everything. And I believe the yeah, word guru, too. the guru word, it's, it's the word guru uh, translates into someone who, like, guides you to the light, I think, right? Guides you to the lightness? Is that I right? I think so. Something yeah. like that. So, yeah, we're, yeah I, I agree. Uh, the last two, two, three years with the pandemic, a lot of darkness, but we, uh, there's a lot of us that are uh, – bringing the lightness back. And I love that. So yeah, uh, Dr. Bradley Nelson, um, for people that don't know, discoverhealing.com, I believe, right, uh -huh. is where people can go. Yep. They can get the book, they can do the certifications. And then of course, the book is everywhere on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and all those beautiful websites. My man, thank you so much for uh, gracing us with your presence for a second time on the show. I look forward to talking to you uh, again in the future. Thank you, Joel. Thank you so much. Take care.